Thank you, Matt, for the introduction. Oh, it does work. Okay. Uh, thank you all for joining our session today, and welcome to Kai. I'm being the first author, I think, and presenter, I should say this. Um, so, my name is Maria Tambru. I'm a postdoctoral uh, research fellow at Carnegie Mellon University. And today I'm going to present you our study on career mentoring in online communities and how people uh, seek and receive advice. And this is a joint work with my uh, co-authors, uh, Laura Dabis, uh, Bob Kraut, and Fan Leo. So, mentoring has been documented as a valuable career resource. And it typically refers to the support uh, people get professionally and personally for their growth throughout their career pathway. Uh, there is enough research suggesting that there are both benefits and downsides. Um, in the, on the side of the benefits, people experience career growth, report career growth, uh, career satisfaction, and learning. However, when you don't have a good, miss, a good match with your mentor, then it's more likely to experience uh, sabotage, feelings of sabotage, depression, and psychological withdrawal. Uh, nonetheless, if you don't have a mentor, uh, it may have its own consequences. So research suggests that uh, people without mentors, without any kind of mentoring source, experience isolation, professional, uh, professional stagnation, and job dissatisfaction. So <clears throat> you, do, you do need uh, some kind of mentoring throughout your careers. Um, and especially in academia, we all know that. Um, so, in HCI, HCI literature and research has focused in, uh, in career research in two main research uh, venues. The one is uh, um, job search and how people use technology uh, to find jobs, especially for underserved population and youth. We also have uh, enough research on how people use technology and e-mentoring for educational purposes. What we do not know is how people use uh, mentoring relevant to their careers, uh, and we will be focusing on the online communities as a source of mentoring. Uh, and the re main research question we're asking is how people seek and receive advice. So this is a traditional view uh, that we have about mentorship. Uh, you have, we typically see the mentor as someone looking like Obi-Wan in Star Wars movie. Have you ever seen that movie? Okay, thank you. Um, and you always have this Obi-Wan guiding and inspiring Luca. Um, however, reality is that we do not always have an Obi-Wan guiding us and inspiring us. So let's take of this Luca in 2019. Uh, his supervisor is trying to get credit for the work that he has been doing. Uh, he cannot go and ask for help his supervisor, ob obviously, conflict of interest, uh, or his peer, his colleagues, because this may threaten his job. So what can he do? He goes online. And interestingly enough, we do not know what kind of career advice requests people make, even in closed doors, because we don't have access to this data. So by going online and posting your question uh, online, it gives us a unique opportunity to study what kind of career advice requests do people make in an online community. And that leads us to the first research question. And then you have a number of uh, strangers with a similar professional expertise that they actually um, give you some suggestions and solutions and some advice of how you can deal with a problem. So, do our, and that leads us to the next research question about the dynamics of mentoring online. So, do different kinds of requests elicit different types of responses? Uh, <clears throat> and not only this, uh, oftentimes you have third parties that they visit the community, the online community, with probably similar problems, and they try to figure out their own solution. Uh, so by going online and seeing what other people have a question and answer, you may benefit and learn from, the, from that. So, and that takes us to the uh, third and final research question. What kind of responses are most valued, both from the original requester, but also from third parties, the observers? Uh, and this is a research overview of our study. 
We had study one where we actually tried to develop a taxonomy of career advice requests. Uh, and then in study two, uh, we wanted to understand to what extent this uh, um, advice, uh, career advice requests elicit different types of responses and what of these responses are actually, which of these responses are actually valued, both from the requester but also from uh, other people. <clears throat> and let's start with study one. Our uh, setting is workplace on Stack Exchange, uh, and it's a Q&A forum that anybody can go, uh, post a question, and uh, everybody can answer. Um, the best answers are being upvoted and raised to the top. The person who is asking the question, the requester, can only accept one answer, and this is typically presented with a green check. So. We had our final data set. We collected our data set, data set from Workplace. Um, our final data set was 400, 470 posts with the tags career development or careers. Every few months, on our, uh, uh, Stack Exchange releases their data dumps on archives. So people can go and research can go and uh, uh, use it for their research purposes. Uh, so we used this pool of uh, posts and we had one coder that went through the 470 posts uh, and um, analyzed them from bottom to top, resulting in three uh, main types of career advice requests that I will be presenting you. And then in the next uh, phase we had the uh, taxonomy validation using two independent coders that they took each type of the post and tried to match each post. Um, with the coins Kappa interrater reliability rating between 0.75 to, to 0.90. Uh, and this is the taxonomy of career advice requests. Three types of career advice requests. Best practices, threats to one's careers, and time-sensitive decision-making. So let's go through each one of them and uh, see some examples. Best practices, basically seeking solutions uh, or approaches uh, to careers, um, to career-relevant problems that are superior than other alternatives, uh, or there are standard solutions in organizations. And here is an example from Workplace. Uh, we have this person who just finished his internship and he wants to update his resume. So he's going online on Workplace and he's asking, I want to add this information, can I, how can I do that? Then we had four best practice themes, uh, resume improvement, how can I improve my resume, like the example I showed you, uh, managing interviews, use of technology and social media for leveraging my career, and the utility of academic credentials and certificates. The second type of uh, career advice request, it's threats to career progress, seeking advice for problems that may hamper your career. Um, an example of this is uh, this user who used to love his uh, job, and uh, at some point they transferred him to another project and he started hating it. So he's considering leaving the organization and he's going online and actually he's uh, posting his uh, problem, seeking for advice. Six themes are relevant to threats to career progress, managing relationships, how can I manage my relationship within the organization, how can I manage failures, how can I resign, how can I prove myself within my organization, uh, how can I balance health problems without uh, impacting, affecting my career progress, and how can I keep myself motivated. And the last uh, type of the career advice request was seeking advice for solutions or input on a timely uh, fashion, on a time-sensitive fashion. So this is a very typical example. You have um, <clears throat> this user who just accepted an offer and then the employer comes with a counter offer. So he's uh, going online and asks some advice on how to deal with the problem. Uh, four types here of uh, time-sensitive decision-making themes, how people can manage the negotiation, job offers, how they can avoid tasks or projects, and ethical issues. So overall, we found three types of career advice requests. So the question here is, do this type of request elicit different types of responses, and what of these responses are actually most valued? And that leads us to study two. Um, <clears throat> so, 
Again, these are the two types of requests. I'm not going to go through them. And here it's a method overview of how we, what we did in study two. We collected 36 posts for our uh, data set with one accepted and one non-accepted answer, that leading us to 72 pairs. And uh, we coded responses using Amazon Mechanical Turks. Amazon Mechanical Turks, that they rated both on the content and the value of the response. For the content, we developed 13 items based on mentoring literature as well as observations of our uh, corpus. And with the value, we, me we measured with two items uh, as on a six um, liquor type scale, uh, asking them to what extent do you think that was a helpful answer and how much effort does the uh, requester actually put to give the answer. And this is an example of how the MTurk response coding looked like. We first gave the question and then the answer, and then we gave the 13 items plus the two of the value uh, measure, and we asked them to rate each response. Uh, we ran a principal component analysis um, to identify the main types of uh, responses. Uh, and we ended up with a four-factor solution with that explained 68% of the variance. Uh, two items were dropped. So our final scale was 11, our final measure uh, was 11 items. So let's go through the factors that of, the, of career advice requests. The first one was general information provision. The information can be applied to multiple situations or multiple individuals. The second one was encouragement. The, the extent to which the career advice giver provides some effort to help the requester feel better, but also look forward. The third one was role modeling. To what extent the career advice giver actually offers uh, personal experiences and to what extent these were positive. And the fourth one was guidance. Uh, problem-solving strategies and steps that they are tailored to the original request. So the question here is, do these three, differ, did three, do these three re request types um, elicit different types of responses? And we used linear regression for nested data to answer our question. And we did not observe any, contrary to expectations actually, we did not observe any effects for that. Uh, in our data. So, and then for the next, our next and finally research question is what kind of responses are most valued, both from the person who is asking the question, but also from third parties. So for the requester acceptance, you will use logistic regression because you have a binary outcome, accepted, uh, non-accepted. And for the third party ratings, we use linear regression. <clears throat> So our findings show that guidance uh, is this factor that actually can predict the likelihood of an answer to be accepted, of a response to be accepted uh, from the original requester. When third part, in terms of the third party's evaluations, we found that not only guidance actually considered useful to the valuable uh, response, but also general information encouragement. And interestingly enough, when people actually share personal experiences, this is less appreciated. So it was negatively related with the value of the response. So in summary, responses were not uh, request dependent. Posts with guidance are four times more likely to be accepted. And third parties value general information, encouragement, and guidance. Role modeling is less appreciated. So in terms of with, for our design implications, how can we design better career-related online communities? So <clears throat> in the paper, we have uh, a few of uh, our, our design implications that you can go and read further, but I'm going to focus on one. Um, I promote career, actually promoting one, our, our main one was promoting career advice response that users will actually value. So, for example, having an intelligent response critique that um, helps the, the, the person who is actually giving the advice to provide responses that they are guidance related. So they can increase the likelihood of acceptance from the original requester. Also, encouraging language and general information can benefit third parties. 
and this is something that they can, uh, we can also actually implement uh, to improve career-related online communities. Um, I don't know if I'm within my time limits, but I am done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Uh, and we'd like to invite any questions. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand clearly. And there's a few uh, at the front here. You look like oh. my host or Fanny. So I was like, Fanny's gonna ask a question, <laughs> but you're not okay. No, <laughs> uh, but I do have a question really quickly. Obvious one, oh, in and out. Um, uh, what do you think about this result of uh, role modeling actually having uh, a negative uh, yeah, influence? It? Is there something in the literature suggesting that that would happen? Because anecdotally from personal experience, so, I think we often find that valuable. So actually, in, liter in, liter in mentoring literature, role modeling is considered one of the functions of mentoring. Uh, however, I don't think because it is very contextual to the, pers to, the pers to the mentor, people do not most likely when they see this kind of information, they, they just wave it. So this is why we have no significant effect with the original requester. Or th when third parties read it, more likely they're thinking this is irrelevant. This is this is not something that we would actually appreciate. So instead, they would prefer to see actual steps. That's my feeling. Uh, yeah. Is there any other question that I can answer? We, we have, have time for one other question. Otherwise, I can ask one. So I'd really like to ask, um, mm -hmm. in, in your paper, you, you talked about the difference between online support and offline support, mm -hmm. and uh, also automated automated support could be a future direction. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of challenges in providing automated mentoring, and are there places where that would be appropriate and inappropriate? Um, okay, that's a very interesting question. So I think one of the challenges is how we can integrate the relational component of mentoring. Um, and I had a little bit of that in my slides but because of out of time. So most of the time, like in the case of health uh, online communities, you see extended relationships where in career mentoring, people just go, there are ad hoc interactions. Like they go, they post their question, they get the response, they leave. So one I think of the challenges is how we can have extended relationships online that they can actually help the people throughout their careers, especially for people who do not have access to mentors. And believe me, there are many out there. Uh, so I think that's, that can be a way that automation can actually help people uh, as mechanism of ex the extend, extending um, part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, please join me in thanking Maria. Thank you so much. Thank you.